A surprising consequence from the pandemic is showing up on people's credit reports. There's been an unexpected boom in FICO credit scores. Despite all the economic turmoil, the average credit score rose to 716 during the pandemic. Joining us this morning to explain why that spike may be misleading is Ann Kaplan. She's the CEO of iFinance. So good morning to you, Ann. Thanks for being here. Good morning. So you have a master's, a PhD in consumer credit scoring. How can you explain this boom in credit scores? Are you, are you saying it's a false boom i would say i wouldn't get too excited about these rising credit scores and run out and start borrowing mm -hmm. the credit scores during the pandemic have um, people were borrowing less they were changing their living situation they were asking for forgiveness on loans they were getting their mortgages delayed to pay at the end and so this will this goes to the credit bureaus and they're not getting reported so people's credit scores go up but that's false. They weren't making the payments. So higher credit scores mean better interest rates. So is now the time. Interest. So is now the time for people to take advantage of that? They can take advantage of the higher interest rates they might get from having a higher credit score. But the banks aren't just looking at your credit score. They're looking at your ability to service a loan too. So if you haven't been making your payments and you have changed your living situation, or you've sold your home, or something has changed drastically, even though your credit score is up you may not get that bar, that loan that you would like. Okay, so then, okay, you're saying now is the time for people to capitalize, though, on improving credit scores, right? So how do they go about doing just that? So there's a, the thought when you when you have a line of credit and you don't and you cancel it, you want to have a lot of money that you have available to you and you want to borrow. You actually want to spend and use your lines of credits and pay at the last moment just before your due date so that you drive up your credit, you drive up your ability to show that you can borrow and pay back. So think about how the credit scores are run and that they look at your available credit, you want to use it, but you want to pay it off just before the pay date. So you can drive your credit score up very quickly by doing that. Use your credit and don't cancel any so, of your bank loans. I just have a question because I was once told that it's always appropriate to leave a little bit of a balance on the on the credit payment. Is that accurate or you should pay it off in full? You can leave a little bit of a balance, but then you're dinged on that for the interest rate. Oh. Mm -hmm. You can use a little bit, but don't leave 90% or 80% yeah. or something like that. You can use a little bit. Yeah. So what are they're, the they're looking at your available credit at the end of the month mm. and whether you use credit or not. But don't pay off early in the month. Don't buy and then pay the next day. Oh, okay. Oh. So, so what are some of the most common misconceptions about credit? I think the misconception is that they that really that the banks just look at your credit. That the credit is the driving your credit score up is the only thing that anyone will look at when you're when you're purchasing something mm -hmm. but it isn't that now the new algorithms are showing you have stability if you move that can drive your credit down or your ability to borrow they yeah. look at consistency and they look at your stability not just your credit score yeah i mean my credit card my credit score went down when i bought a house um but let me ask you this because i'm, I'm very uh curious about what you just said so People often think, oh my gosh, there's a balance and I just got paid and it's the 15th of the month. Let me throw a couple hundred bucks towards my credit uh, card bill. So you're just saying hold off, but what's the logic behind waiting till the end of the month? Well, you want it to hit the bureaus. You want it to show that you've used the money. So if the reporting only happens once a month, by ah. everything that you do gets reported. So you don't want to use credit and then pay it off and it never ever hits the bureau. It never shows that you've utilized it. I see. Okay, so we're heading into the holiday season. What do you? What would you suggest is the smartest way to use our credit during the holiday season? Use your credit cards, borrow, don't cancel your bank lines. Use your credit, drive your credit score up. You can manipulate your credit score to get a higher score, and that does drive the interest rates down for you when you're borrowing, especially for a mortgage. So you want that credit score to be high, but you want to pay it off. So if you're going to go out and buy, use your credit cards. All right, don't pay. Thanks so much for that advice and insight this morning. Thank you. Right. Gosh, I just learned a whole lot because I hate seeing that ba that balance, <laughs> right? So I yeah. always just, you know, but you want to get the points of using your credit card too. A lot of people have rewards for using credit cards. Yeah, that's why I usually do the same thing. I make that same mistake. Yeah. I pay it right away. Look at that, huh?